Well, corporations are piling onto Russia as Disney and Warner Brothers now among the names targeting the country. They say they're going to pause their film releases in the country. For more on this, let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Alexandra Canal, who's been following the story. And, you know, we we're talking with Dave earlier about the importance of soft power with sports. And it looks like on the entertainment side, movies now in vogue as well. Tell us more. Definitely, Brian. We're now seeing top media companies responding to the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. We have statements from Disney, Sony, Sony Pictures, Entertainment, Warner Media, all confirming that they have paused theatrical releases in Russia, citing the invasion. And this comes as some pretty high profile films are set to make their debuts over the next few days and weeks. For example, Disney's upcoming Pixar film, Turning Red, will not be available in Russia despite a previous release date of March 10th. Disney is saying in a statement to Yahoo Finance, quote, we will make future business decisions based on the evolving situation. Now, Disney was the first major studio to pause releases in the country, but Warner Brothers quickly followed suit just a few hours later, announcing that the Batman's release date will also be on pause. In addition, we heard from Sony, who will be pausing the upcoming release of Morbius, adding in a statement, quote, our thoughts and prayers are with all of those that have been impacted and hope this crisis will be resolved quickly. Now, if we take a look at the Russia theatrical market and the impact that it could have on Hollywood, it is certainly not as big as China or some of those other Asian markets when we're talking about the international box office. But all of that being said, it's still pretty significant. Last year, for example, Russia accounted for over $600 million in ticket sales, making up about 2.8% of the worldwide box office figure, which totaled $21.4 billion, according to Comscore data. In addition to that, Russia is a territory that ranks in the top 10 countries by year. It was ranked number six worldwide in 2021, seventh in 2020, and ninth in the pre-pandemic year of 2019. So we're seeing an upward trend there. So when you're talking about pausing films, delaying theatrical releases, especially coming off of the pandemic, it's always a financial risk of some sort. So this is a very bold move from these studios. They are choosing to stand in solidarity with Ukraine, and it's certainly sending a very strong message. Certainly, Alexandra. And you know, I want to ask about Netflix here because they're apparently refusing to comply with Russian rules that require them to carry some state-run channels on their uh, on their service. If they don't do that, this is going to have some serious implications, won't it? Yeah, this is very interesting. According to a new Russian broadcast law that was set to go into effect today, any media platform that reaches more than 100,000 subscribers in the country will be required to include as many as 20 free-to-air Russian state TV channels. Now, Netflix, which would fit that subscriber requirement, is refusing to comply with this law, saying in a statement, quote, given the current situation, we have no plans to add these channels to our service. Now, one of those channels in question is Channel 1, which reportedly has strong ties to the Kremlin. Another is uh, SPAS, Spaz, which is operated by the Russian Orthodox Church. So a lot of these Russian state-run media outlets, which have been pushing the Putin agenda, spreading disinformation, those are the ones that are really in question here. Now, right now, despite Netflix not complying with this rule, it is still expected to continue to operate in the country. It's unclear at this time how it will plan to skirt past and avoid this new legislation and and regulation regulation, especially if the country decides to enforce it. But it is worth noting that Netflix's presence in Russia is still relatively new, launching in the country just over one year ago. Estimates place Russia's Netflix subscriber count at less than 1 million, but it's definitely still a region where Netflix wants to expand its footprint and continue that growth overseas. So this is just another example of how various U.S. businesses are making these quick decisions to limit operations in Russia. Russia. And I'm sure there are going to be more moves and developments with this, especially as the crisis in Ukraine continues to escalate. Yeah, fascinating story. And I guess at least for right now, for the Netflix story, the ball back in Russia's court. But Yahoo Finance's Alexandra Canal, thanks so much for breaking all that down for us.